Whether you're a student learning to code or a professional programmer, here is my ultimate guide of what makes a great coding laptop. But before we get into it, a bit about me, as that's important for this video. I have two degrees in computer science, a bachelor's and a master's. I was a professional Java developer for 13 years, eight in large corporations and five at a startup. And then on this YouTube channel, I have over 150 videos that are mostly in-depth reviews of laptops. So today's video really combines two of my areas of expertise. First up, I need to clarify something. You can code on almost any laptop, especially if you're just learning. So do not be discouraged if you can't afford what I'm recommending. You will be able to have a career on a lesser device. It just won't be as ideal as the ones I talk about today. Heck, I learned to code on an Apple IIe. So here's my criteria for what makes a great coding laptop. Let's start with the screen. As a coder, you'll be looking at tiny lines of code all day. You'll want to make sure you can see the most amount of code on screen without needing to squint. Seeing more lines of code will mean you can be more effective at understanding the algorithm you are working on. When you have to scroll around or constantly drill into different bits of code to find answers, it's hard to remember what you are looking at and you become less efficient. Now, the amount of code you can comfortably see on screen without needing to squint is a factor of the screen size, its resolution, which by the way determines how crisp text is, and its brightness. So I'd recommend a laptop with at least a 14 inch screen size, a resolution higher than 1920 by 1200, and a brightness in excess of 350 nits. In fact, I believe a 14 inch screen is the sweet spot. It's large enough to get real work done, but not too large to be cumbersome to carry around with you. Many programmers that I've worked with like to bring their laptops with them, whether it's to meetings, to coffee stores, you get the picture. For those who do want a larger screen laptop, either to see more code on screen or for additional performance that these bigger devices offer, leave a comment down below. If there is enough interest, I'll do a follow-up video on those. Next, performance. Almost every processor in today's laptops have plenty of grunt for coding. Apple's M1 and M2 laptops are excellent choices as they are powerful and you'll feel very little heat from your laptop or hear annoying fan noise. On the AMD side, look for a Ryzen 6000-7000 series or higher processor, preferably a Zen 4 one, which you'll be able to determine by the third digit in AMD's naming convention. If you go Intel, any 12th or 13th gen i5 or i7 or better is fine. Please make sure you spend time researching what applications you'll be working with before purchasing a laptop. For example, if you're coding native iOS apps, you'll want a Mac. If you're working with applications that only run on Windows or Linux, but you bought a Mac, you'll be forced to run a virtual machine on your laptop or code on a remote server, both of which are less than ideal. For students to help you out, I checked both MIT and Stanford, two of the most famous universities for computer science. Both are recommending Apple laptops as well as Windows ones, so you're likely covered if you go either path, but double check with your school just in case. When it comes to memory, also known as RAM, software developers have a lot more programs open than normal users. Browser tabs, office applications, all of those. Then on top of that, you have your software development environment, a ton of developer tools, and of course you'll likely need to be able to run the application you are actually coding, so you can test it. All of these require RAM to run. Therefore, the minimum should be 16 gig, although I have a strong preference for 32, or the ability to upgrade to 32 later on. Next storage. If you are coding something that has a large set of images or a very large database, you'll need a lot of storage. That being said, for most coders that I've worked with, 512 gig is probably fine. Although obviously more will future-proof your laptop. If you are planning to do data science development, including machine learning, you may want a laptop with dedicated NVIDIA graphics. Due to the size of data and processing power required for these tasks, normally your models will run on servers in the cloud. But if you do want to test your models on your own laptop, the tensor cores that NVIDIA offers will enable you to do that. Also, many coders I know like to game in their free time. If that's you, you'll want to ensure your laptop has dedicated graphics. Now at this point, I do want to reinforce something that I've touched on. What you are coding will substantially determine what specs you need for your laptop. What I have said up until now is a really good rule of thumb and will be great for most coders, especially students. But if you are developing something specific, you got to research if you have additional needs. For example, I was once coding a large Monte Carlo simulation that required large amounts of data in memory. 32 gig of RAM would not have been enough for me. 
As you may change jobs in the future or applications that you are coding today, it's a big plus if the laptop is upgradable, specifically the memory and storage. That will give you flexibility and it will take the pressure out of having to overspend now on components that you just may not end up needing. For the rest of the laptop, you'll want a very comfortable keyboard as you will be typing a lot. You'll want a keyboard with no weirdness either, i.e. standard layout with physical function row. Most development environments that you'll be using, they have tons of hotkeys available to speed up your workflow, and that is important. Many of them, by default, use the keys in the function row. Non-physical function rows, like on Dell's XPS 13 Plus, can result in missing the key and a lot of frustration. Now, talking about frustration, you'll want a laptop whose keyboard deck does not feel warm to the touch while using it, especially when running performance tasks. That would be very uncomfortable and distracting. Now, on distracting, I really want your laptop to be quiet. Nothing is more embarrassing than being in a meeting or in a class and your laptop's fans are as loud as a jet engine. Unfortunately, whether the laptop has annoying fan noise or feels warm to the touch, that's not something that is listed online. So that's why channels like mine exist, so I can tell you about it. A good trackpad is a nice to have. Most professional developers that I know bring a great external mouse with them. Other than that, the webcam should be in the right position for video calls and of a decent quality. And you probably want okay battery life, that's a clear plus. Lastly, I really advise you to buy a laptop with extended warranty. Your laptop is your career. You can't afford to have an issue with it that isn't covered. Large manufacturers and many big retailers offer the ability to extend the warranty. Please make sure you leave some of your budget for that. And use discounts available to you. Students, you tend to get discounts, so check with your school on how to access them. Corporate employees, you likely have employee discounts available too, so check with your HR department and if you don't, obviously change companies. That was a joke. Terrible joke. Special note for students, this is not the time to cheap out on a purchase. Most of you are going to be living and breathing off your laptop for the next four years of your life. You need to ensure it is good enough. Now. If I just ended the video here after giving you requirements to look for but didn't actually list some of the laptops, you'd probably be pretty disappointed. So I spent the entire day compiling every possible laptop from every manufacturer that has a chance of meeting my criteria. And yes, I will place a link in the description of the video where you can access this list. All I ask is you smash the like button to say thank you. The next step is to slim down the list into a small number of contenders rather than just one. That's because programmers' needs can be quite specific as you've seen in this video. Plus, people are shopping at different budget levels. So something like best programming laptop for those on a budget, best for students, best for those needing dedicated graphics. As many of these laptops are new or refreshed for 2023, I haven't used all of them. So I've reached out to every manufacturer and literally ordered all the ones I haven't tried in. I'm not joking. In a follow-up video, I'm going to compare every laptop on this list and tell you the very best ones. So make sure you're subscribed for that and have the notification bell on as it's going to be epic. But for now, I've classified the ones I do feel confident in in green for recommended and orange for not, with a short rationale at the end as to why. Well, that's all for today, folks. I hope this video was insightful and helped you determine what laptop you should look for. If it did, let me know with a comment below. If you feel I missed something important or there's another laptop that should be on that list I showed you, let me know down there too. I read all your comments and I often learn something from you guys. Now, at this point, I normally you know, say, please like and subscribe. It shows your appreciation for the video and it makes my mother very proud. Well, she has been watching the videos and she is very proud, but she feels that I'm talking a little bit too fast. Do you agree with her or do you like the speed I'm talking at because it makes the videos energetic? Let me know. Let's wrap. Go do something awesome with your day and I'll catch you later.